What if your cells had their own armor to keep you healthy? They do. It's called the glycocalyx. This thin protective layer coats every blood vessel and cell in your body. It helps your circulation run smoothly, keeps nutrients flowing where they should, and protects against inflammation. A healthy glycocalyx means better blood flow, stronger barriers in your gut, and improved insulin sensitivity, all key to good metabolic health. But how can you support it? By keeping blood sugar stable, eating nutrient-rich foods, and staying active. When your glycocalyx is healthy, your whole body functions better. This is Lecture 121 of the Metabolic Classroom. Looking to improve your own metabolic health? Visit InsulinIQ.com for courses, coaching, consultations, and a 10-day free community membership trial. To dive deep into the science behind metabolic health, become an insider at BenBickman.com, where you'll enjoy my exclusive content, ad-free podcasts, live stream Q&A access, and more. Welcome to the Metabolic Classroom. I'm Professor Benjamin Bickman, a biomedical scientist and professor of cell biology. Today, we're examining the glycocalyx, a critical yet often very overlooked component of cell structure. And because it affects cell structure, no surprise, it has an influence on cell function or cell biology. What is the glycocalyx? It is a carbohydrate rich layer. Now, you might be making some assumptions. Don't make any assumptions yet when you hear me say the word carbohydrate. So it is a carbohydrate rich layer that coats the surface of most cells in the body. It's composed primarily of a handful of molecules, including proteoglycans. You can hear the word gluco or carbohydrate, that word there, glycans. Proteoglycans, glycoproteins, and even glucose, glycosaminoglycans. Yes, let me say that one more time, glycosaminoglycans. Um, a main one that I'm that actually becomes quite relevant in the fat cell is heparin sulfate. That's a glycosaminoglycan. And chondroitin sulfate, you might have heard of chondroitin. Some people take that as a supplement, as also uh, and also hyaluronin. These are all together coming together to form a gel-like structure. So it's like they're woven together uh, along the surface of these cells. <clears throat> on endothelial cells in vivo, so within, within the living organism, the estimates of how thick this is range uh, in the order of just a few tenths of micrometers. So that's where it is at its smallest. But in other instances, it can get down to the level of micrometers. So it's even, uh, or, or several micrometers, so quite a bit larger. So there's quite a, a size difference in how thick this, this gel-like layer of the glycocalyx can be, depending on whether it's in the large arteries, like where it's a few micrometers, or again, down at the level of individual cells, where it is going to be you know, a few tenths of micrometers, so quite a bit smaller. But it's going to be, like I've said, on it's everywhere. Red blood cells have them, immune, uh, white blood cells, immune cells have them, and it's typically going to be always a very small layer. No surprise. Now, back to the word carbohydrate. When I say carbohydrate rich, because that's how I described the glycocalyx, a carbohydrate rich layer, I don't mean the carbs on your plate, or I don't mean the glucose in your blood that you're measuring with the glucose meter. Those are free sugars. And of course, we burn them or store them. But the glycocalyx sugars are structural, and they are assembled inside the cell and then covalently bonded or attached to proteins and lipids in the cell membrane. Then they're presented, they're flipped out, if you will, on the surface of the cell, like a, like a shag carpet, like, a, like me when I don't shave my head very often. There's this little bristle of, these, um, glycopro of this mix of glycoproteins, and they form the glycocalyx. So you don't eat this layer. You don't put it on or you don't put it off. And a high carb meal doesn't suddenly thicken it because there's more glucose, even though glucose as a molecule is a part of this complex. The cell will build and remodel the glycocalyx through specific enzymes over much, much longer time scales than when you might see your blood glucose levels climbing or dropping. 
And it will do this in tune to various signals and various needs of the cell and the physiology of that specific tissue. Like the gut will need a certain amount of glycocalyx, the endothelium will need some, and so on. Now, yes, as I noted, some of the building blocks ultimately come from glucose, but it's intracellular. So it's only when the glucose is coming in is it used then to create the glycocalyx by need. But as I'll come back to, chronically high glucose, paradoxically, is more likely to damage the glycocalyx through oxidative stress and some non-enzymatic glycation. That's the advanced glycation end products. So it's more likely to damage the gly glycocalyx than it is to feed it or expand it. Oh, and as I said, I'll come back to that more. But the glycocalyx layer serves multiple functions. It can serve as a selective barrier to control molecular permeability, so what can get past it. It also can sense mechanical forces like shear stress. That, of course, is very relevant in the blood vessels in response to things like high blood pressure. And it will bind signaling molecules to influence how the cell will respond, may or may not respond to that particular signal, that molecule. In metabolic contexts, the glycocalyx modulates nutrient transport so the movement of things into the cell. It also modulates inflammation and even some cell-to-cell -cell communication, all of which is essential for processes like glucose uptake or the metabolism of fats coming into and then being metabolized within the cell. 